everybody. How are you all this evening? Um, just I hope you've all had a lovely Easter and I'm super excited because I also get to paint with you on TV next week. So a week today. So next Tuesday. No, what day is it today? Tuesday, Wednesday, a week on Tuesday, a week yesterday. Sorry, I'll get that right. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Um, yeah, next um, Tuesday, I'm going to be painting. I'm going to be bringing you something new, but I wanted to give you all a sneaky peek a bit and show you how I'm going to use this in part of my designs. So first of all, I'm just going to move this. I've got a piece of acetate over here and it's just picking up some of that overhead lighting. But I want to just share with you some of um, the designs I'm doing because what I've got for you is a set of painting pages that are all about compositions. So I'm just gonna show you a few of them. So we've got our um, irises, I've got my heart wreath, I've also got my circular wreath, I've got tulips and some little bits of lavender. I've got very, very, just a really small rose that would sit in the center of a card when you put your sentiment at the top. I've got a bunch of roses. I mean, doesn't that look just so strong when you see it like that? Really just comes to life. Then I've got some primroses and bluebells. And what's really interesting about this one is I've overlaid, I've put sort of double layers on some of the primroses, but again, that looks really strong. I've got some um, wisteria. I've also got some lavender and just some little tiny flowers in amongst there. Then I've got um, just a little branch of some uh, um, blossom. I've got a whole little bouquet of different flowers that you can see. I've got a traditional rose range. And then I've got this lovely rose crescent, which I think is super. If I just place that underneath here, it looks great, doesn't it? Actually on the rectangle, I can position it to make, make that sit perfectly. But if I also bring in one of my ovals, this is the best shape to work with it. And look at that, that for me, that's a perfect greeting card ready for us to put some other a sentiment or some other detail here. So that's one of the things I want to go through our brush loading once more. So a massive welcome to anybody who's joining us for the first time. Please put your names in the chat if you are, because I would like to see. Um, and those of you watching from anywhere in the world, it's lovely to have your company. But if the weather's bad where you are, Sue in Cornwall, oh my goodness. I drove back from Create and Craft. While I'm putting my paint out, I'll just talk to you about this. So I, I drove back last night from Create and Craft and it was miserable. And the M1 was closed. So Create and Craft, for anybody who doesn't know, the old Create and Craft used to be on a place called Newark Road in Peterborough. The new Create and Craft, or the amalgamation of the old one and um, the craft store, or Huchanda, is actually in a place called Aundel, just outside Aundel. And um, so I can come on the A1 um, if I go to Newark Road, or the M1 if I go to Aundel, and it's actually a little bit quicker. So I'm of course, I'm going to go the fastest route. But last night, because parts of the M1 were closed, I had to go on the A1. And I'd forgotten how bad that road can be. And first of all, there were roadworks for so much of the journey. And then on top of that, the rain was horrendous. So at midnight last night, I was driving back home, doing 30 miles an hour on like a 50, 60 mile an hour road just thinking I really just want to get home and it was super frustrating but anyway I got there and I got up this morning and everything was fine right I just want to talk to you about this cadence Dora that I'm going to be working with so I've got some Dora paint I'm only going to put out a small amount of it um, these are all brand new colors that are coming to you next week and actually for anybody who wants to shop cadence i've got a discount code for you for um, highlight crafts 
and you can use that discount code and it'll get you 20% off. So we'll put, we'll share that with you later on. But just going back to that journey home last night, it was absolutely horrendous and so bad. I just, I couldn't wait to get in. So was um, really pleased to be home last night. Okay. Right, so I'm going to paint in this set, this oval, and I'm going to paint in a sort of a bit of a semicircle here. So I'm going to paint a crescent for you. But before we do, I've actually got this on a piece of acetate because I want to be able to show you a bit more work on brush loading. So I'm going to use a piece of construction acetate and I've been working on how I can help you all. So first of all, I'm picking up that those little triangles of color on both sides of my brush. So remember that is super, super important. And then picking up the second color. So I've got triangles again on both sides of the brush. And then when I stroke this on, I'm stroking it so that I'm putting the paint onto the brush and I'm pulling it at least two thirds of the way up these bristles. And if I just hold this up, there, you can see what that looks like. So you, I think that's really important. You can see the width of my brush. So there's the width of the brush there. And there is where I'm actually stroking. So literally, I am stroking it like that. So I'm just gonna do this once more and I'll hold it up again. So I've been trying to work out different ways of being able to share this with you. So if I stroke it like that, and I go the other way, so you're seeing that paint coming onto that brush. So look at how that's working, and then look at what's happening here. Now where I've got these blobs of this purple, I'm gonna pick up just the white, and I'm not gonna pick up purple, because I'm gonna pick up that as I'm actually using my brush. And then I'm gonna move slightly over to the white and do the same, but make sure that I've got it so that it's nice and smooth across my brush. And I've still got it nice and smooth and creamy from light to dark on here. Really, really important. Right, so first of all, I'm gonna paint onto this piece of black card. Then I'm gonna paint onto a piece of acetate, but I'm gonna do a smaller composition. Now, by smaller, I'm talking about smaller in size, not smaller in volume of design. So I've gone all the way down to a number 12 flat. And that means that this is probably one of the smaller brushes that you will see me working with. So I'm just gonna come back into my, um, my paint, pick up some more now. The white that I'm using is from my white glitter, and that's what this one is. So it's a glitter hybrid um, that you can see. It comes in black and white and a few other colors, which we will also be stocking. And just so that you can see on the side where the barcode is, it tells you it's white plus gold. If it says white plus silver, you're going to get silver flakes in it, not the gold flakes that I'm working with. So let's just have a little look at how this is going to come together. So first of all, I'm just going to put myself a little bit of detail in. So I'm, I'm sort of giving myself the range of where I'm going to be working. So I'm just lining this up so that I'm pulling that chisel edge together so that I can get all of those elements in and I'm putting in my working space. So this is going to be my working space. So now I can remove the white panel because I've got my working space. I know what shape I'm working to and I can start putting in some of these other elements. So let me bring this right over here. Excuse my arm for a moment. I'm just going to bring this right over so that you can see me brush loading and um, using my palette at the same time. So we'll get that all together there. So this time I've picked up some of the fuchsia and still that white and I'm still in the same patch that I was in a few moments ago. 
So a little bit of fuchsia, a little bit of white in that same patch. But look how creamy my brush is. Really, really got that lovely and creamy. And now I'm just gonna put in the first of my petals. And as I'm working, I can see the tiniest little hint of that gold just coming through. And I'm using both sides of the brush. Now watch what I'm doing now. You can see the spring in this brush. I'm using the spring and I'm pressing down further so that I can take the paint all the way up the bristles. So I've used all of that paint to help me get round this complete flower. Now, the next thing I'm going to do before I finish that one is I'm gonna put the next one in next to it. So this is how I build up my composition. So I'm building it up, it's starting to get a bit dry on the edges. So I'm just gonna pull in a little bit more of that white paint and I'm just gonna pull that in and get the second of those in there. Before I carry on with those flowers, I'm gonna need some leaves because I want to be able to have some of these leaves behind and some of them in front. And I'm just picking up a tiny bit of that blue that is the Dora Metallic. So I'm going to now come in and put some of those leaves in. So they're going in in all the places that I would want the foliage peeking out. So I've got one there, I'm gonna go up here and I'm still staying in that shape that we created with those guidelines, that's part of the design. So keeping it all so it's working. I'm gonna put another one in here. But you can see if I'm not careful when I'm putting this one in, then actually it would have been better for it to go behind that leaf. But this is this is fine, we're, we're happy with this. I'm gonna put another one in just there and we'll put the detail in. So I've sort of layered them up. A bit more of, the, of that lovely blue that I've got. But this time I'm gonna do it like an ivy leaf. So I'm gonna go out, come back, wiggle to the tip, then come out, come back, wiggle to the tip. So I've got that little bit of white coming through there. I'm going to repeat that process, just pulling the paint down my brush, making sure that I've got it really, really smooth and creamy. Up here, so I'm just going to wiggle out and back and to the tip and wiggle out and back and out and back and to the tip. So I've got another little petal in there. I'm gonna put one just here. So out and back, out and back to the tip. And then the same on this side, just a little bit jaggedy. Let that come in. And notice how I put the white on the outside of these and I've got the blue on the outside of the others. We need a couple more leaves, so I've taken the darker of the green, so that Oxford green, put it onto where my brush had the blue, and then I'm just pulling that paint down, and I'm gonna put in a couple of these little flat leaves. So these are just going to fill in, they're sort of almost like um, little gap fillers. Let's have a look and see, maybe we'll put a couple down just there. And we need something here, so I'll pull a leaf in there. I'm gonna pull another one in just there. And I think I'm starting to get my composition now. I'm starting to feel that that's working. So I'm now gonna go into the plum and the white, and I've pulled both those colors in and a new patch on my mixing palette. And what that blue with the plum will do is it will give me a lovely, lovely shade to go over these roses. So I'm now gonna start to put in the next layer of the rose buds and the roses themselves. So again, I'm letting that paint just do the work. It's almost like it's got a, a more darker mauve center, really looking lovely. And then again, just pull the color together. And for anybody who's wondering, my brush has got no water on it, it's got no mediums, no extender, absolutely nothing, just the paints themselves. And so I've now put that in, you can see how the, the first layer, it looks like I've got another flower coming from the inside. This time I'm gonna go into the fuchsia pink. 
and the white. And I'm going to come into a separate place and I'm loading that and pulling that all the way down. So whichever way you look at this brush, it goes from light to dark on both sides. Really important. Now I can see a little bit of excess paint along that, that edge there. So I need to be careful when I'm working that I'm not gonna get too much in the middle. And so I'm just being careful with it, making sure that I don't lay down too much. Turning my brush over, so I'm picking it up as I go along. Really happy with the way that that's starting to come together. I'm going to go into that fuchsia pink again and the white. And we're going to come up here and we're going to put some, oh, a little bit too much pink. Let me show me what's happened to my brush. I've lost that graduated colour. On one side it's still there, but I've lost it on the other and that will affect my painting. So before I pick up more paint, I come onto here and I'm going to pull that paint down. So my brush is now much nicer, but we'll just pick a tiny little bit of white up, stroking it to pull the white through, stroke it again, and I've now got it much nicer and nicer on that edge. And I'm happy that when I do this little bud, it's going to look lovely and crisp and clean. So let's go back in here and put another one in and get that really nice and crisp and clean. We'll put a little one here, crisp and clean. Right, so now I'm thinking about my composition. I've got to finish off the center of this flower. So I'm going to go back into that. And now I've got my color. I've got the blue out of here. I'm just going to put in um, a little wiggle at the back of the flower and then pull my bristles together. Make sure that I've got them really nice and tight because I want a little, little bud in the middle. And here, I'm gonna go on the chisel edge, come round and come round again. So I've got a few colors going on in here, but I'm liking the way it's looking. I'm going to come back with my chisel edge and I'm now looking at anywhere else that I need to do some work. I need some work here and I need some work here and probably need to finish off at the edges. So just here, I'm gonna put a little flower. So I'm just going to come in with that pink, make sure I've got that white really nice and crisp so that you can see the contrast of it against the flower next to it. I'm just going to make it so that it's almost a trumpet shape. So I've got a, a very much an oval I'm pulling that paint. So again, let's take a look at the brush. So I've got a ridge of paint across the top. Need to do something about that. I've got a ridge of paint, probably two or three millimeters up from the bottom. Need to do something about that. And also those bristles are starting to separate and spike. The other side looks completely different. So let's even this up by coming back onto my palette. I'm pulling that paint down, really getting rid of those ridges, pulling it down and evening it up. And you can see what I've done. I've evened that brush up perfectly. So now when I come on here and I put that little bud in, which I've just done, and I'm just gonna get the tiniest little bit of white because I want this to be crisp when we put these comma strokes in. So one, and one just there. You can see how that, that flower just looks nestled amongst the others. Still got these gaps here to deal with. So I'm going to change down my brush size again. So remember we were working with a number 12. So now we're going to go in and I'm gonna find myself a number 10, or in fact a number eight. That number eight will be fine. So into the white and into the fuchsia. So let's keep these colors really clean. So white and fuchsia. Now the smaller the brush, the more difficult it is to brush load. But don't worry about that. Oops, and I've picked up the um, plum there. I'm gonna go back in and pick some fuchsia up because I do want to get this a little bit lighter. If you struggle to load this, just side load the brush like that. So you literally pull it through rather than dipping it in, pull it through, and you'll be surprised that that paint is enough 
to spread across the whole of the center of that brush. So we're now, I'm just gonna come in here and put a bit more detail in those buds. So we'll pull that little bit of white. So side swipe, side swipe. It's a good way of making sure you get just enough paint. And we're gonna put some more little buds, but I'm gonna put these in, in a little cluster. So I'm gonna put them in a little set of buds and we'll do one more just there. So you've got some those little buds in together. Again, keeping those colors, so side swipe, side swipe, keep it clean, keep it so that they're small. Look at the difference in the sizes of the work that I've got really coming together. I want one up here, so I'm just gonna put that little one in there and we'll put another little one in here. Now, I'm gonna now want to put some little berries in this because I want to finish it off with some berries and I also want to finish off these roses. So to put the berries in, I'm going to pick up the Oxford green and some white. And I'm gonna keep this color quite as clean as I can. So Oxford and white. And I'm just going to come out like this and put some little stems like that. Let's put another one just here. Put a little one just there. So um, maybe a little bit just here and a little bit just there. So that's where the berries are actually going to go. And while I've got the green, I'm going to use that and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go round these buds. So this action, on the chisel edge, push to the side and just slide. That side, push and slide and just catch the middle. Okay, let's do that again. So push and slide, push and slide and just catch the middle. So we'll do the same, push, slide, and just catch. Push, just slide, catch. And you may find that, you know, you don't want to do all of them. You just want to do the sides of some, the middles of a few. You can, you know, it's really up to you how much de extra detail you want to put in at this point. Okay, so there we go. Let's get these little berries in. So we're gonna use this plum and I'm going to use it to put the berries in and they're quite dark. So um, whether you're gonna see those up there, you're not gonna see those. So I'm gonna change what I'm doing and I'll do the berries in a different way. So we'll make these like, um, I was gonna do those as sort of like, um, what would you call them? Sort of just like little wild berries, little dots but like row, um, row and berries or something like that. But what I'm gonna do instead, um, well, I'll show you one way of doing it and then I'll show you another. So I can go into my plum, into my white, into my white, come on white. It takes a minute for the white to get, there you go, I've got it. And I can touch it and it will give me both colors at once. So that's a quick way of doing it. So you can see both colors at once. Or you can do the next thing, which means going down another brush size. So I'm gonna go to a number two. So we are quite small now. And we'll go to the burgundy and the white. So plum and white. We really do need to side load this because otherwise you end up with far too much paint. So like, that. So white, plum, like that. And the plum and the white. I'm just going to pull some of that blue in as well. And the way that this is going to work is we've got to, I've got to remember which way round this is going to look good. So I'm going to go up and over and up and over. And I'm just going to do a little blackberry or a little berry. So just a little berry like that. So I'm gonna put another one in here. So we need to just 
make sure I've got my side loaded, my red and my plum and a little bit of that blue. And I'm just going to come in and put these little berries in as if they're sneaking out behind the, um, the little pieces of work. So there, again, taking these little bits. So where else did we say we wanted something here, didn't we? So we'll go there. So it is literally, this is like doing that rosebud, that top, that up and over. So I'm just doing the little tiny turns, making that just a little berry come to life. And then, I wish you could see this in real, real life. And we'll do this and I'll show, I will do the berry on the acetate. Thank you, whoever's just re requested that. So absolutely we can do it. And I'll do a bigger berry as well so that you can see how you do that. Now, if you notice when you do berry, when you seek pick berries, they have these little strands to them. So it's nice that I've been able to put those little bits in. But I'm now gonna come back to my green and my white. Let's get that loaded again. And I'm just gonna put in a few little strands and nothing much, just some little bits of foliage, just to sort of a little bit of gap filling, a little bit of just texture on the design, just bringing those bits in. Let's get a little bit just up there. Okay, right. So let's move this out of the way. We'll have a look at what this looks like. I'm just going to bring in my frame. And you can see that is what it would look like. Okay, so that's the a first little concept. In fact, probably it might look quite nice with a rectangle. Mm, that looks better, doesn't it? Slightly bigger. Right, so let's have a look at those berries and look at um, what you do with them. So first of all, I'm going to come back into this palette and I'm going to put the berries to the side. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to do is I'm just going to lift this up and I'm going to let you now start to see some of that glitter. Let me just see if where we can get that glitter. Move it to my right. You can see that metallic, can't you? And there we go. You can see in that metallic luster and a little bit, there it is. Yeah, so I think there it is. You can see it now, I can see it on the screen. So that luster's really, really pretty, isn't it? Okay, so let's look at this berry and how we do it. So I'm just gonna pick a couple more um, colours. I'm going to go with a, I've got a red, a burgundy red. So that should, I think that will do it actually. So let's do that and just have a look and see what I've got green wise. Oh, super lovely. Nice, nice, nice. So this is another one of the Doras and yeah, it's a lovely colour. Really nice. Come on. Out you come. Don't want too much. Okay. So that's probably enough, actually. So such lovely metallic clusters on these. They're just stunning. Okay. So I'm not going to change my, my brushes. I'm going to work with this one. In fact, let me work with a larger brush and I'll be, you'll see better the, the actual strokes. So I'll do this on this piece of card and then I'll come on and I'll work on, I'll actually paint on the acetate for you. So first of all, I'm going to save that brush. So I've just wrapped it in my um, little bit of cloth that I'd got. And where's this one gone? So we'll just clean this down a little bit. So to do the blackberries or the little berries that we were just doing, I've got a little bit of the green and a bit of the white. I'm just pulling those colors together. So some green and some white. And I start off and I need a stem and I need it so that it's got a few little pieces off it. Now, when I do my um, gypsophila and wisteria, 
I do that slightly differently. So let me put that stem next to this one. So there's the one for the blackberries and the gypsophila, I come up straight, I go out straight and off each one of them, I put a branch. So off each branch gets another branch like that. So you can see how that builds up branch by branch. Whereas here, I'm making a more sweeping curve and I'm letting it sweep off wherever it's going to go, okay? So they're the differences between those. And then for the actual berries, so I'm just gonna pick up the burgundy and the, or the plum and the white. And let's have a little bit of that red in there as well and get it nice and rosy. So the actual stroke itself that we want. So I've got in my head, I've got those two parallel lines and I'm just going up and over. And then the next one comes slightly in from where I finished. So I finished there, but I'm gonna move my brush in slightly and I go up and over. So again, keep that brush level. And then here I come in and go up and over again. And the reason that I'm moving it in slightly each time is because we want it to be more circular. So I want it to be like this. And then another one there, and another one there, and another one there, and there. So can you see how I'm building round that circular shape? So I'm literally, I'm coming in, I'm going to bring another one round here and another one round there and round there and round there. And then for my berry, I would have a little bit of, a little bit of green, a little bit of green. Let's take it there, a little bit here and then just my little blackberries. So you're building your little blackberries. So on here, what I would do is I would probably get two or three on this one. So I would go here first. So I'm just gonna go really quite quickly, just so you can see how I'm building it. And then, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more, must keep that chisel edge together, otherwise it gets fluffy on the end, which is what was happening to mine. So building it, and then I'm coming round, and I'm just gonna come round here. So I'm making that little bit like a berry. And then I'm gonna go again, keep that nice and right. Um, let's put this one down, uh, no, we'll go up a little bit, I think, there there, there, whoops, the stroke's a little bit short and small. So keep those going. And you can see how we're getting that lovely shading in there and bringing all of that together. So a little bit of extra detail. So I've got those. And then this one, I'm gonna do this one so it overlaps a little bit. So it comes over the top of the one that I've just done. So you can see how you can be quite quick with these. Just don't lose that shape. Don't lose the curve that we're wanting. So I've lost it there. So I've come back and put it back in. Put another one in there, there, probably another one there. So you can see how I've, I've actually started to get the little berries in. Then I'm going to go into my green and my white. And let's put that green in there, just there, and then up here. So those little leaves, you'll have seen them loads of times. We've done lots and lots of them. So there's our little blackberries. We can go right out with the side stem. So we've got our little raspberries, blackberries, and then we need some really small little leaves. Now we can do those so we can have really spiky, spiky little ones like this. So really get those lots of spikes in them and get that so that that just comes in. 
and then I'm going to do another one just here up and to there and we'll do another bit just here and I'm going to bring that into there I was holding my breath then because I knew that brush wasn't quite loaded properly so I was thinking I was probably going to end up with it not working but it just gave me a little bit of um, a reprieve this one I'm just going to do a half so it looks like the leaf's turning and then so to do a turning leaf we go up and we wiggle and as you're coming around here instead of slide into a, a straight and coming off like that I'm going to slide round and come off that way so I'm going to slide round to here and come off there so that again looks like I've got another one of those leaves then let's put one more up here so and this one's going to go up there and I'm just going to do that so that that one comes round like that so you've got all these little berries all with their leaves all going on however you'll notice when we did this we planned the composition so when I'm doing this if this was my black if I was doing these blackberries what I would be doing is I would be putting the leaves that I need up here first so that when I come to do this part of it this leaf can be behind and it's not looking like I've put it in as an afterthought, which is what that will look like there. So you can actually have it so it's peeking out from behind the berries. So think about where these leaves are going to go now and start to build your composition. And I'm just going to lift this and let you see again that metallic. I mean, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. It really does make a difference doesn't it it's just beautiful so okay right so we paint on some acetate so let's do that and oh and then and before I do that I just need to I'm just going to pop those in there for a moment and I'm just going to move this to one side because I want to show you something that I did earlier um, I will I haven't done the berries on the acetate but I will show you those but I want to just share this with you I've been painted on fabric so this is onto a little, it was a little makeup bag that came as part of um, some makeup that I was bought for Christmas. And I've painted it onto there. My apron, now, these flowers here have been washed 10 times. So on a hot wash too. This hasn't, because this I only painted a couple of weeks ago, but this has been painted and washed and washed and washed. And then the other thing that I've just done is I've just painted on a pair of um, jeans. So I've just painted down the leg of a pair of jeans. And how much fun is that to be able to do stuff like that? Andrew, you'll have to go out a lot further if you want to see the whole package pair of jeans. These are big ones, they're mine. <laughs> but there you go. So doesn't that look, that looks fab, doesn't it? So yes, can you paint on fabric? Absolutely. And it's still the hybrid acrylics. I'm not doing anything different. So let's do some painting on acetate. Right, hopefully this is dry, which it is, because I'm going to put the acetate onto the black so you can see it. So I'm going to pick back my palette that I'd got and we're going to paint something nice. So let's have a look at the colours that I've got here to be able to paint something. And are super, super exciting. So um, just to tell you a few things that we've got happening. So we've got some great, brilliant new Cadence products coming in, which I'm, I'm very, very delighted to share with you. We've got um, all the new Cadence Dora Metallics as well that are going to be available. And um, they really make a difference when you come to paint because they give you these lovely rich colors which you can see. So I'm gonna work with a little bit of this on, the, um, on this acetate so you can see it. Just get that off me. And then just so that everybody can see a little bit of what I'm painting. And then, um, 
what else can I tell you besides, oh yes, the lovely Mel Heaton um, tomorrow is actually on Crate and Craft. I'm a bit gutted really, because I wanted to do it. Um, but Mel's, um, Mel's actually doing the show. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to do it was because we have got a brand new tattered lace collection. And if I say so myself, it's, I'm probably, oops, most proud of it because it's a really clever, clever concept. So I'm not gonna say any more, but just if you wanna watch it, Mel's on tomorrow night. So, and then don't forget a week on, a week of, as of yesterday, I'm gonna be on there doing um, painting for you with new pages. Oh, and I'm gonna be showing you how to paint a, um, a repeating back pattern as well, doing a seamless pattern, so that'll be a bit fun. Right, so let's go with a little bit of the green and the white, and we're gonna paint um, a wreath. So I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna paint part of the wreath shape. So it's going to be, yep, you've guessed it, a heart. Okay, so that's the first part of it. And then this was a, see if Andrew can guess what I'm going to paint competition. And he guessed it. So I need to have a little bit of it coming out and I'm just going to let these little bits and remember I'm using some of that metallic. So it's not just the hybrid acrylics that work on acetate, it's the metallics as well. So this is the Dora. So I'm coming out, keeping the, the sweepingness of these lovely little tendrils, making sure I've got some pieces going in different directions like that, just come out like that. So I'm now gonna just lift that up and let you see how good and how strong it is, how good the colour is. So you can see that from both sides, really strong colour and looks great. And then we're going to come on to, back onto the front. So remember what we were talking about, laying down our, com our composition. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put in some ivy. And actually, I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush. That was... um. I think that would felt like it was a number 12 that I was, uh, number 20 I was working with, maybe an 18. Let me go one size smaller. That's a, still an 18. I might have to wash one. Let's have a look, Let's see what we've got here. Um, 18, 20. Mm, Andrew's suggesting that I might have made it into a stippling brush. He could be right, actually. Let's have this one. Yeah, this is the number 12. It's a, one of the older brushes, but this one will still be okay. So we'll, um, we'll just get those bristles loaded properly with this paint. So let's get plenty of paint on here. Right, so I'm going to go out, back, and down. Out, back, and down. And then I'm going to just pull that in just there. It's quite interesting working on the acetate because in these lights, it's very reflective. So I'm almost painting without seeing where I'm going. So, and obviously don't want to get my, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way as well so that you can, you guys can see. So let's put another one in here. So we'll come out down there. We'll go out, see how it still covers over everything. It still does a good job with all that coverage. So we're gonna go again. We'll put some out here, here, down. I'm using the white to give me a little bit more definition on the design. So putting that little bit of ivy and mixing the color between the um, the white with the sparkle that I've got, some of the Dora metallics, which are absolutely adorable to work with. Did you see what I did there, Andrew? For, oh no, he wasn't listening. Um, and do you know everybody, just so that everybody wonders, um, I'm not talking to myself. I've got the lovely Andrew with me and he's my producer director. And um, yep, he's right, I am talking to myself. Um, 
He's our lovely producer director and he um, he's absolutely brilliant at what he does. So I was just seeing if he was listening. He was. <laughs> OK, so I've got a lot of these leaves going in this direction. Now I need to paint some going the other way because otherwise this is going to look isn't going to look balanced. So I'm going to go out, back, out, back down here, come back, and then we'll just go there. We're going to do the same thing on this side, out, back, and down. I'm going to go out, back, out. And you can see how you can actually, you can get so that you stop and start in different places. You'll get more confident as you work and being able to get the, a different look and feel. So I'm out, coming down, across, back and round and then there so I've got a bit more dimension to it it's a little bit more balanced but we're still not there so I'm going to come back and put another little one of those there and then come down we'll just bring that out round and then in to here so I've got a few of those little leaves in I think I'm needing another couple to just definitely get this right. So I'm going to come straight down, just make this one really small. So, and I put another small one here. That one just slightly different. So there, the, these are some of the little ones. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm picking up the white and I'm going to the hybrid metallic. Now, I've still got a bit of glitter on that so I'm going to take that glitter off and I'm going back into the Oxford green and the white and we're going to come up here and we're going to put another one in but look at what happens when I change my paint so it immediately leaps out and comes on top of the design and gives me a different look to what I'm doing. I'm not happy with that petal or that leaf. So I'm going to come back, go back over it, come back in. A lot happier with my brush load in on this one. Then, so you can see, I've got that detail. I'm going to put another one in here. So we'll come down here. Again, out, back, out. I'm just going to bring that round and over. A little bit more of those two colours, so keeping the glitter away from this now. So we're going to come out here, round and down, out, round and down. Um, I'm going to put a little tiny one there, which is just literally as it is. And we'll do a couple of little ones here, and they are just literally little wiggles that are just almost coming out from the detail of the, the design. So I've got, I've put some of my leaves in. Now I need to look at what I'm going to do for other decoration. I'm just going to lift it up and let you see how those metallic colours are coming through. And we need to get those berries in. So we'll, we're going to bring that chisel edge together on the brush and get it nice and sharp. So we're going to look at where the berries are going to go. So I'm just going to put this here. So I'm going to put a berry there. I'm going to go just here with one. I'm going to go there with one, there with one. We'll put those there and one over that green there. So let's have a think about where that is. Oh, and let me just share this with you. If you don't like it when you've printed painted it on acetate, you can literally just wipe it off. It, it's brilliant. Um, I'd wait for it to dry because it wipes off really well when it's dry, but that's a good little, little trick for you. So I need to put a few leaves in for these. So I'm going to change my color and I'm going to go with a, a different shade of green. So wipe down my brush, pick up the different green, and we're going to put some berry leaves in. Just so let's have a think about where these are going to go. So we'll put one just here. 
So just there. I'm just going to get that loading a little bit better because it certainly isn't very good. I'll just pick up the green because I needed just green for this. Um, I think we'll put another one in here. We'll just put a little bit of greenery there. Just looking at where these are going to go. One maybe here. Just that. And then just round with that one. We'll get another couple down here so they can go over the top and there and then I'm going to do a slightly different stroke so let me show you this one so what we do when we do our leaves we normally we go like this press down and slide like that don't we that's one of the strokes that we do but I'd like you to just try this one so I'm actually at an angle. So instead of starting straight, I'm starting at an angle. And I'm just going to slide like that as an angle and slide, angle and slide, angle and slide. You're almost making a little diamond shape. So let's go back in here. These are super, super easy to do. And so we'll go a diamond and slide, diamond and slide. We'll go... A diamond and slide, diamond and slide, diamond and slide, diamond and slide. Put them in pairs, diamond slide, uh, diamond slide. Must keep the chisel edge together though, otherwise it doesn't work. Diamond slide, diamond slide. And there's another two. Filling in all this greenery. Keep going. Then here, here, and here. Okay, so we've pretty much filled in a lot of that greenery now. So we're ready to put our berries in. So this means a nice clean brush. So let's get that washed out. It's not gonna be clean. I think I'm gonna be getting the brush cleaner out tonight. So that's when I've finished all the die cutting because there's still quite a lot of that to do for the next few weeks of shows. So berries, berries and these beautiful berry reds. So white and the red. Now I'm going to, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to turn this round so that you can see me, the, the angle that I'm painting at. So I'm going up and over, up and over, up and over. I'm looking at it, it's very white. So I'm going to pull a bit more red in to that. So now on my brush, I've got my red is only what is over, over two thirds. Okay. So now when we paint, there we go. That's loads better. Look at that red. It's looking much better. So I'm just going to go round. These could be raspberries. They could be, um, I don't know what color Logan berries are. Does anybody know what color Logan berries are? Just wondering. Um, Andrew doesn't know. So we've got one here. So we're going, picking a little bit of that white up again. So I'm using construction acetate, everybody. If anybody's wondering what kind of acetate, it's construction. So it means that this is really strong and sturdy. Look at those, don't they look fab? Oh, Carol, thank you. She said they, she thinks they're like raspberries. So I'll go with that one. So these could be Logan berries or raspberries. But you can see this little turn that I'm doing, how it just brings it together. But it's very much about the shape of the actual design. Um, I don't know whether anybody who's coming to the Academy at the weekends on this class, it'd be, I've, if you are, looking forward to welcoming you. We've got um, another from the beginning class and also a um i'm just gonna move this out because i've got a little bit of water in this brush and you can look you can see that green that was what was bleeding into the paint and making this color go a little bit um muddy so we've got another from the beginning another painting our floral bouquets class at the weekend which is really 
Look, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I love teaching you guys. Absolutely love, love, love it. So, and all the academy classes now are starting to get quite busy. So check them out if anybody is wanting to come on any of them. And I know we're quite a long way away for a lot of you, but you know what? It is a great holiday. So don't miss out the chance of doing that. We just need you to come and see us, come and visit, come and have a weekend away. So, and when I get to this bit, I'm keeping it going to keep that shape a little bit rounded, you know, to get that bit of rounded detail on it. And then I'm just going to go here and, oh gosh, picked a bit of green up there. Don't want that if I can avoid it. And I'm just going to bring in this one here. And I think what's really super exciting is, how, well, it just works on this acetate. So just remember, everybody, you've got 20% off as well. So, oh, I've done, apparently I'm in trouble because I, I didn't tell you about it. Um, Andrew, we've got a code, so we'll get that posted for you so that you guys can see it. Apparently, there it is. So it's just hybrid 20. And... That's great because you've got 20% off there. And I think the code's valid for two weeks. So that's going to give, give you a while to decide what colours you need. Right, back on here. So remember, on the edge, slide. On the edge, slide. On the edge, slide. So um, on the edge, slide. Slide, 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 slide. Let's get that chisel edge back. And we can't cheat it. Slide. They go slide, slide, slide. And then finally, I'm just going to put a few little pieces of just foliage in. And just little, little stems of just a little bit of just almost like tendrils. Get some more just here, a little bit out here, Maybe a little bit to finish off just there, fill it in. And there we go. So there is our painting on acetate. I'm going to turn this over for you so you can see, of course, now this is where it gets interesting because you can see the petals that I lay down first, the leaves, and how the berries now actually are behind the leaves. So I'll just turn that back the other way. So that's one side and that's the other. Okay, everybody, so please, um, please do join me next week, Tuesday at, I believe it's at four o'clock, I want to say four o'clock, I'll get you to check the Create and Craft schedule. But if you are watching, it's Tuesday the 18th. And um, it's been such a pleasure as always to have your company. Thanks for the emails. Everybody's been sending me emails. Hope I've replied to all of you. If anybody's still waiting for a reply, drop me a quick message now tonight because it means you've been buried in the 208 I've still got to go through. Oh my goodness me. Um, a quick reminder of the code, it's hybrid 20. And um, maybe, do you know, send me some more pictures that you'd be happy for me to share with the teams because I'm seeing some blinking amazing painting and I'm so proud of you all. Just don't miss the opportunity to get those paintbrushes out because I'll tell you what, it feels amazing. Lots of love, everybody. God bless you soon. Take care. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.